Welcome back to my channel, Easy Ed Tech. If you're new here, welcome. So this tutorial is about Book Creator. It's a super easy tool that you can use to make a personalized book for your class. And of course, I'm gonna add my Bemoji to my story, but that's up to you. This story is a back to school story, kind of welcoming kids back into the classroom. But this is a tool that you can use any time of year. Before we get started, don't forget, if you enjoy my video, please like and subscribe and hit that little bell notification symbol next to the subscribe button so you get notifications of all my future videos. Thanks so much. Let's get started. So here's the book that I created with Book Creator. You can either go through and scroll through the pages on your own and click on the little icons to have it read or you can click on Read to Me. Hi everyone, and welcome to Miss Peterson's class. Once upon a time, there was a strange pandemic that swept across the land. We all stayed inside our homes. Restaurants closed, stores closed, even the schools closed. We were sad because we missed our friends. We also missed learning new things in our classroom. And then one day, they said that schools could reopen. For schools to reopen, we have to follow some rules to keep each other safe and healthy. Always wear a mask, don't touch your face, stay six feet apart, Keep your hands clean. Cover your mouth when you sneeze or cough. By following these simple rules, we can come back to school and laugh and play and learn again. You've reached. Okay, so that's the book that I made with Book Creator. And in this tutorial, I'll show you how to make your own. So first, let's navigate to Book Creator. Okay, and I'm gonna sign in with Google. And the first time you do it, you're gonna have to, um, you know, just tell them you're a teacher and all that stuff and set up your account. You get, as a teacher, you get one library with 40 free books. So that's a pretty good amount of books. So this is the book that I just showed you. Let's start a new book. You can choose the size. I chose square. You can choose these comic sizes, which are fun too, depending on the story you want to tell. And you have a cover, and then you can add pages as you go. And you can create scenes right in Book Creator. So for example, here, this is the color that you can choose for the page. You can choose borders. There's some different fun styles. You can do a comic kind of style. Um, so you can explore that. You can import any images that you have saved from a camera. You can draw pictures right here on the screen, which is cool. You can add text boxes and you can record your voice. We'll get to that a little bit later. You can do shapes and call outs or thought bubbles. So there's all kinds of things you can do here. What's cool is some of the features, you've got move to front and move to back, just like you would in Google Slides or anything else, but you can lock images when you make them right here in Book Creator. And you can also use the Bitmoji extension and just drag your Bitmoji right into Book Creator, which is fun too. However, I like to make my scenes in slides. So what I did was I set up some Google Slides and I set my page set up to 20 by 20 inches. You, I, 10 by 10 also worked. I, don't, I think I was just playing around and trying it on this one, but 10 by 10 works just fine. Um, so let's go and make some slides and bring them into Book Creator. So first of all, this is a very basic Bitmoji scene. And I have a tutorial on how to make this scene. 
So, or a scene like this. I'll put the link to that in the description box right below this video. So if you're looking to learn how to make a scene like this, that link will be there for you. So what I did was I just pressed file, download, PNG. A PNG image is better resolution than a JPEG, so that's why I always choose PNG. And it's just gonna download this one slide. So let me go back to Book Creator. And I take the download right here. It's on that gray bar at the bottom. I just drag it right here. If you can't find it there in the gray bar, it's usually in your downloads folder. But there you go. So I've got my cover for my book. And then I can go on to the next page. As you can see, I made each of the scenes for my book in Google Slides. These are really easy to make. So let me just add a blank slide and I can show you exactly how I made this one. I went to background, selected choose image, Google image search, and just found a room that I liked and inserted that. One of the great things about doing an image search from within slides is you know that Google has already filtered these results for commercial reuse with modification. So these are totally safe to use. And then I dragged my Bitmoji in. And added a text box. I used Oswald for my font because it's a nice, clear, easy to read font. And then that font's got to be way bigger. Okay, so something like that, maybe even 96. Let's try that. Yeah, that's good. So that's how I made this one. Although you can see I did do the smaller font on that one, so whatever you prefer. So, and then I just download that slide. Download as PNG. Go back to my book. And I did do it just like this, where I did it one at a time so that it was clear to me which files were which page. I found it easier to make a slide, bring it to Book Creator. Make a slide, bring it to Book Creator. And to do the audio, you just press the plus sign, record, start recording. Welcome to Miss Peterson's class. And then you can play it back if you like. Welcome to Miss Peterson's class. And that's good, so I'm gonna use that recording. It shows up right here in the middle, but you can drag that wherever you like. I like to put them all kind of in the same place, so I just chose one bottom corner and did that. And I recorded for each of the pages. Once upon a time, there was a strange pandemic that swept across the land. And again, just drag it down here. And I just did that for each of the pages. So for this page, when I made it, let me just add a blank slide so I can show you. Again, text box for the text, for the Bitmoji, I just used the Bitmoji extension. I typed in window and found this one. And to get the background color, I drag it from the corner to maintain the aspect ratio, the same width and height. And to get the color of the slide, I used Colorzilla. It's an extension that I really like. Uh, if you've watched my videos before, you've heard all about it, but it's in my must have extensions video, how to get it, what it's called, all that. So again, I'll just link that in the comments. So pick color from page, and I put my little crosshairs over the street light because it's that yellow that I want. And when I see it show up in the bar on the top, I just click, and then I can go to background, color, custom, and just paste in by pressing Command V or Control V, the hex code for that color, and done. So that's how I did that one.
And this one was just, you know, background color. I, I used Colorzilla on one of the tiers to get this background. And I put in sad for my Bitmoji search. And again, just a text box. This, I just duplicated the scene from the top slide, changed the words on the board. And I think for my Bitmoji search, I used excited. And again, a text box for the text. And this one was a little bit trickier. So I'll show you how to do this one. So for the poster itself, I did insert image, search the web, and found this poster. So then I sized it to the size I wanted, which was definitely smaller than this, but not a lot smaller. And then arrange center on page horizontally. And then what I did was I inserted a shape. I picked a rectangle and I just put the rectangle here and changed the color of the rectangle to white and picked transparent for the color. So now it's blank and you can just duplicate this and drag the new one down here. To duplicate, you press Command-D or Control-D. And again, Command-D or Control-D to duplicate. And I just did that. Drag this one over a little bit. I just did that for all the boxes. And since shapes have text in them, you can just go ahead and type your text. Let's see, what do we have first? Always wear a mask. And I can't even see that, so we definitely need to change that. Okay, so you can just um, put that right in. And then what I did was I just highlight everything, including the shapes, once the shapes are all done. Um, and right click, two fingers on the trackpad, and group. So these are all groups. So now if I move this around, my rectangles aren't left behind. So that's how I made the poster. And for this Bitmoji, I had to add a mask. So let's just talk about how to do that. So again, it's just a text box and a Bitmoji and a background color. I had already used this background color from the tiers on this slide. So what I did was I went to background to color and because it was already one of the custom colors I had used, it's here. Then I went to my Bitmoji extension and typed in welcome and got this Bitmoji. Of course, the words at the top are a text box, same as always. And let's see, we, um, oh, we need the mask. That's what we need. So let's insert, search the web. I use this one all the time. I like this one. So I just drag it over here and close this out for a better workspace and just size it. I know because I've used this one before that those white ear loops are too big. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna double click this image till I get that gray box to crop it down and just crop it like that to bring those white, oh, Command-Z or Control-Z. Okay, so that looks good. And so that's cropped down a little bit. If you hear scratching in the background, that's my cats, I apologize for that. They want my attention right now and I'm not giving it to them. And then we just put the mask right here and size it. You might need to crop it a little bit more but we'll get a better idea of that once it's in. Okay, that looks good. So well, I do wanna crop that just a little bit more. Okay, I like that. And I'm again gonna group these because I, if I need to move my Bitmoji, I don't want that mask to come off. So now you can see. And now I can just right click, center on page horizontally, so, and then you just add the text box. And to get the same text as the slide before, 
what I do is I go and I highlight the text, I use the paint roller, and then when I come here, I highlight that text. Oh, it didn't get all of it, so I'm just gonna do that, paint roller, and then do the rest, and you get the idea. So that's how I did my book. So once you have all the pages in that you want, you can publish it. So if you wanna see what it looks like, you can press play, and if you've, if you've recorded your voice, when you read to me, it'll read what you've read. If you haven't, and you put text boxes in with Book Creator and not the text boxes from slides, it'll read in a weird robotic voice. Um, if you put the text in from slides, it won't read it at all if you haven't recorded your voice. So you can have it read to you, and this is what it looks like when the students get it. Um, and this is how you can share it, this little share icon. This is full screen, if you wanna look at it on full screen. This is the share icon. You can download as an ebook. This went to Apple Books for me, because I'm on a Mac. And you can print it out, or you can publish it online. So you put the title in, and publish book. And what's great is, if you later decide to stop publishing it, you can just stop publishing and it won't be available anymore. But also, if you make changes to it later, they'll still reflect on that, um, on that link. So when you copy the public share link to your clipboard, that's the link that you're gonna give out to people. So, oh, one last thing, let's go over the settings. So it automatically displays the pages side by side. If you want them to just see one page at a time, you just toggle that off. Um, the voice is in English and you can change that. So English, English, and then you can choose which voice you want. The automatic one is Alex. Like I said, it's a very robotic voice. And so these are some of the uh, features that you can change in the settings. So let's go back to my book. So this is the one that I've finished with. And I don't remember what the link is, so let's go to play, share, published online, and then I just copy it here again. I'm gonna go to the three dots on the top and go to a new incognito window so I can see what it'll look like when my students or their parents open it. And this is what they're gonna get, which is great. This is my finished one. Um, so that's pretty much it for Book Creator. It's a really fun tool that you can use to share a story with your class, to really personalize a story for them. Oh, one more thing I do wanna show you, that if you chose to make a page of your own, um, one of the things that you can do is when you add text, you can also add links. So say at the end of the book, you wanted to say, now let's go to, and send them to a link, you can put a link right in a text box, which is a great feature too. So I hope you had fun learning a little bit how to use Book Creator. It's a great way to really personalize a story. And I like to add the Bitmoji because then it's bringing you into the story and it adds just a fun element. If you enjoyed this video, please tell your teacher friends all about it. And don't forget to like and subscribe and hit that little bell for notifications. And if you wanna find me on social media, it's at Easy Ed Tech on Instagram and Twitter. Thanks guys, see you again soon.